We know it's really important for students to share their work no matter what type of learning they're doing. And in Minecraft Education Edition, uh, that sharing is equally important. Most of the time, the only people who get to see what kids make inside Minecraft are people who also have Minecraft. But what about those people who don't have Minecraft? They also are interested in what students are building and making. So the best way to share student work outside of Minecraft is by using the structure block. It lets you capture a portion of the Minecraft world and export it as a three-dimensional object that you can then host on the internet and share with something as simple as a web link. So let's dive right in and see how the structure block works and how you can share student work um, simply through the internet. I'm inside the fantastic Mr. Fox map and I'm flying over uh, one of the farmer's properties and there's a really interesting windmill here. So let's practice our th 3D object sharing with just this windmill. Uh, in my hand, I can you can see that I've got a structure block. It's that big purple thing just down there. Um, the way that you find that is you hit E once you're in creative mode, of course. So you can see that this uh, green book here means that I'm in creative mode. So click on the search or the magnifying glass and type in structure block. There it is. So I've already brought that down into my tool belt along the bottom here. So flying down, let's put one of these on the ground. Now I'm using this windmill because it's a nicely defined shape. So if I uh, pop on the ground here, right on the corner, as soon as I place it down, you can see these thin lines. They form this little cube space. So that outline is the space that's going to be captured and shared. So in this, I need to now right click on that structure block and redefine the part that's going to be shared. There is of course some limitations to that. So let's have a look what those limitations are. So I'll right click on the structure block and I get this little dialog box that again shows me those thin outlines. And on the left hand side here, the X, Y and Z um, size and the offset. So let's first of all make the uh, size larger because that windmill is quite large. So the largest I can make the X coordinate is 64 blocks. As soon as I click out of that, you'll see it's resized down here. In fact, it's now potentially capturing a really large area. The largest Y coordinate I can do is 128 blocks. So it's really quite large. So again, it's scaled back to show more of the area. And the Z coordinate, also the maximum you can do at the moment, is 65. Now in the preview down here, it's showing me uh, all those six chicken pens and a portion of a tree and some of the grass. So that's my immediate area. Uh, I need to now manipulate the offset uh, figures so that it's the selected area moves back across that windmill. So let's go uh, backwards say by 32. Uh, let's move uh, also sideways by 32. And now you can see that the um, windmill is well and truly being captured by that large export area. Um, one thing I don't like about my capture at the moment is that this half chicken pens are slightly cut off. So let's move it sideways a bit more. Okay, I've manipulated my um, the size of the capture area and I've manipulated the offset so that the preview down here gives me um, both sets of chicken pens and the, um, the windmill all the way up to the top. But I'm missing some ground underneath this chicken pens. So I need to lower the capture area down a little bit. And of course, that's the Y coordinate. So I'm going to offset that, so let's say, by four blocks. So that now uh, I've got uh, ground underneath all my chicken pens. Um, I've got the fence and the grass at the back. So I have nicely framed the area of my build that I want to export. Next, I need to give it a name. 
Once you've named your area that is going to be captured, uh, leave the 3D export option the way it is. Uh, I can include my entities now. If there are any chickens wandering around, those chickens, uh, that's an entity that's going to be exported as well. Uh, if there are players standing in the area right now, those players are not included. If I turn that, that switch on, then the players will be included or they will be captured like a photograph um, as part of it and remove blocks. Well, obviously I don't want to remove the blocks because the blocks is what I'm capturing. And now let's hit export and save this portion of my build to my computer. If you're familiar with 3D um, files or 3D objects, you'll see that this .glb file format, that can also be used in other 3D modeling applications like Paint 3D. You can also import this into your Microsoft Office products with using the, uh, the import 3D option. But I just wanna save this to my computer and export it out to the internet. So let's click save. All right, I've signed into Sketchfab. Sketchfab.com um, is a really interesting platform that, that is designed for sharing 3D objects. No matter what type of 3D objects, you'll see that all kinds of people use this area. So my recommendation is that teachers, you set up the Sketchfab account and then ask students to give you their 3D model so that you as their educator are managing um, the public hosting and the public sharing of this stuff. Um, also, please note that the terms and conditions of the website do specify that nobody under the age of 13 should create an account as per all um, web-based platforms. So teachers, it's uh, recommended that you manage the account and you take all the objects that the students export and you upload them yourself. It's really quite a simple process up the top right hand corner. Once you've signed in, um, uh, then you can hit the upload button and simply drag and drop or browse to get your 3D object. Now I put mine on my desktop and it was called Windmill. So I'll simply upload that and hit the upload button. I've got the opportunity here to add some metadata. I can put a description uh, around what the model is, who made it, what it was for. I can add some categories um, about what this is for and add some tags for how discoverable uh, this model should be. All right, my model has finished uploading. It did take about uh, 10 minutes to process, uh, which I thought was a long time, but it's here and it's ready to be shared. So when I click on my model, I've still got a few options available to me. Um, and on the right hand side, we can see the 3D settings button, which is particularly interesting because uh, once you click on that, you get to make some edits still after it's been published. Um, my two favorite things to have a look at here um, is of course the annotations. It's that top little um, marker here. I've added two annotations. So the idea is that you can then pinpoint a certain part of the model um, to add text to like an explainer or provide some reasons um, or additional information as to why that part is important. You can do that simply by double clicking somewhere on your model. So let's double click on the very top here and go. And then when you have these annotations, you can see I've got three of them now. They actually provide a way for people to navigate around your model. Down the bottom of the screen are these arrows that you can go uh, left, right, and uh, from annotation one, two, and three three that I've got on there. So that's uh, the first thing that I like about this post publishing editing that I can do. The second uh, thing that I like is there's a virtual reality um, tab up here. So if anybody is looking at your model uh, in VR using um, a VR headset, you can then manipulate the scale and the position and where the actual floor level is for VR. So when people are uh, moving around the model, um, which is a great way to give people an immersive experience, but you need to set those settings up for them. Um, you can also play around with the lighting of the scene. You can um, decide whether you want shadows or not. Um, you can play around with the background materials of the scene. Um, so go in and explore that. Not every setting is useful, but it's worth playing around with. 
Once you've made those changes, of course, up top right hand corner, hit the save settings button and hit exit. You can see my annotations are still there and um, people have still got a way to navigate uh, through these um, points of interest. I can double click and zoom right in, grab the model, move it around. Uh, and as I double click my way through, I can explore different parts of my Minecraft model. Now sharing is of course really easy now that it's on the internet. I can uh, grab the share button down here and then copy that simple short URL, which I can then include in an email, on a website, in a newsletter, um, or I can grab the embed code. Now, if you do manage a website, whether it's a school website or your own website, then grabbing this HTML code down here um, and pasting that inside your, your web, um, website, it means that visitors to your website can explore your Minecraft model right from within that space.